Thanks for waking up with us. doing everybody welcome back to stand folks for jesus hope each and every one of you are having a blessed day in the lord jesus christ as always today is friday october 1st 2021 this is a post that i made for me an hour ago for you it will obviously be several hours later or maybe the next day um <clears throat> as i was posting it and i was going into some detail I was led by the spirit to expound on some of the things that I was saying in this uh, in this post so before I read it and I expound on what I want to expound on I want to go down here and I want to look at some of these words and one of them is as we see a formula and it says an expression using numbers or symbols Excuse me, <clears throat> y'all give me a second while I drink my tea because it's kind of early for me. <sighs> An expression <clears throat> using numbers or symbols giving the directions for preparing a compound such as a medicine or giving a procedure to what to follow to obtain a desired result. So a formula is going to give you a desired result or the result that you you hope for. A lot of times we know that the results they get isn't the result that they want, but it's still something bad. Then we go look at the word drug. A drug is any chemical substance. Remember what chemical is. Chemical is the study of chem, the study of melanin, the study of carbon 12, 666, six protons six neutrons six electrons that causes a change in the organism's uh, physiology or psychology when consumed it does what it causes a change in a person's physiology or psychology you're dealing with a person's mental state you're dealing with their their spirit drugs are typically distinguished from food and substances that provide nutritional support Consumption of drugs can be via inhalation, injection, smoking, ingestion, absorption, via a patch on the skin, suppository, or dissolution under the tongue. And what is a drug according to Black's Law Dictionary? The general name of substances used in medicine. Any substance, vegetable, animal, or mineral used in the composition or preparation of medicines. The term is also applied to materials used in dyeing and in chemistry and in chemistry. So we got that now. Let's go up here and let's let's get into it. The secret truth about vampires. Now, what I want you to think about when we uh, we speak about these things is the wheat and the tares. He said the wheat are the children of the kingdom of God that God planted here and the tares are the children of the wicked one the children of the devil that the devil planted here it said that the devil planted them here so how do we end up being planted here our mother and father came together and then we came forth from them being born into this physical world so that would mean that the tares, they are born in physical bodies. And then they are here on this earth. They look just like mankind because they were born a physical birth, which is another reason why Christ said that unless you are born of the spirit and of water was water and spirit. How do you want to say it? 
you cannot inherit the kingdom of God. You have to have a physical birth. Because once you come into the physical birth, then you're under the curse of the law. And then you have to be born of the spirit, being born again, coming from under the curse of the law through the gospel. Also think about the scripture where it speaks about Satan and his goons. They transform themselves. They transform themselves to look like us in regards to believers. They already look like us in regard to the flesh because they are born in this flesh. When they do come in this flesh like that. So when we're talking about vampires. Yeah, they they uh, are walking around. But remember, we're dealing with the spirit. What are they spiritually? On the out, on the out, outside appearance, you see them as mankind. You see them as doctors, lawyers, even your regular average Joe. But what are they really? And when you look at the wheat and the tares... When you get ready to go break those uh, tears down or break that wheat down, the wheat is broken down, it's broken up for food. But the tears, what do they look like on the inside? They're black. They're black on the inside. On the outside, they, on the outside, they look just like wheat. But when it's harvest time and you go to break them down, they are black on the inside. So even though they look like us and everything, they are they are black on the on the inside. So when we talk about vampires, it says a vampire is a demon which sucks the blood of persons during the night. You ever notice that in the vampire movies, the goal is to find a way for them to walk in the daylight? And the, and the word speaks about this. In the book of uh, Jude, I think it is. The book of Jude, I think it's also in the book of Peter. Um, where they riot. They riot. They find, they find sport. They find pleasure in rioting in the daytime. They're coming out of the night now. And they're showing out in the daytime. They're showing out in the light. Christ said that we are the light of the world. So when we're preaching and, and teaching and doing all these different things, according to, according to the word of God, what are they doing? They find they found a way to make sport, to make fun and mock and scoff what we speak and who we represent. You ever notice that the only vampires who could walk in the sun were Melanate, Melanated, Aaliyah, Wesley Slipes, Aaliyah, Queen of the Dam, if I'm not mistaken. She died shortly after that. We know about Wesley Snipes. Interesting, huh? That's why I showed John, I spoke to you about the whole chemistry thing. It's the study of, you know, Melanin, but before that, study of carbon 12 and everything. We have sermons on that for those who are not familiar with that. The root of vampire is witch. That's what they used to call them. If you look at the two, you can see how and why. Vampires obviously suck blood. Mosquitoes suck blood with a needle type object to feed their youth. What are they doing? They're sucking blood to feed themselves, also to feed their youth. Same thing you see in the Twilight Saga. I hated that series. I hated that show. I, I hated it. I, wa I watched the whole thing. I watched the whole thing for um, learning purposes. Because movies, we know they put a lot of stuff in there. And you could take things from a movie and make it so it, that the people have something to relate to so they can get it. There has to be a conduit, conduit that connects to people so they can understand what you're saying on the spiritual level. That's why Paul said, I can't speak to you spiritually, I have to speak to you carnally as babes because you don't get it. So I have to always do that when I preach because I know there are people 
that aren't going to get it if I just come out straightforward and speak it spiritually. You know, so those who get it spiritually, you get it. And you can also relate to what I'm saying on the carnal aspect, you know, making the connection with this and, um, you know, the Twilight Saga and everything. But yeah, I hated that. Bella, oh, she, she pissed me off. She pissed, she pissed me off so bad. She, and then the crazy thing is the vampires even, didn't even want her to do it because they know what it meant. They know what it meant, but she was willing, if you think about it, it's exactly what's going on. She was, she was, she wanted to give up her, her, we're going to use that word. I don't want to use it, but we're going to use it. She wanted to give up her humanity so bad to be one of them. And they were pretty much telling her, no, this isn't what you want. Um, what's the dude's name? I forgot her boyfriend, husband or whatever that she ended up having a hybrid baby by, you know, think about that hybrid baby. He was like, this ain't what you want. This ain't what you want. Bella wanted it, and you can see toward the end, the last one, she wanted the power. Because they were like, wow. Like, she was doing more than, than what she expected. She kept on, she was hungry and hungry for more and more and more. And then what happened with Bella? Bella died. Bella died, and then she came back to life. And when she came back, she was, she was pretty much unstoppable. You could say she was even more powerful than the original original family <clears throat> that the you know the show that the ones they had in the show and everything because she wanted it so bad um so the same thing is going on today people are giving over their we're going to use that word i don't like you to use it but we're going to use it just for argument's sake and for understanding humanity they want to be these creatures they're so in love people are so in love with aliens they they so in love with aliens that you know it's crazy they care more about the aliens and finding aliens and coming in contact with aliens and the aliens coming that they don't even care about the aliens here on earth their fellow brother or sister that they treat as an alien from some far distant galaxy universe that's crazy and these a lot of these same people They'll tell you that they love or they love God. Yet God tells us that how can you say you love God, but you don't even love you that you don't love your brother. You don't love your sister. You say you love God. And you ain't seen God, but you ain't show no love or have love for your brother or sister who you see every day. This is the world that we live in. So. <clears throat> is it a coincidence that the. I'm not going to say it because I don't want to get flagged right now. Y'all know they tripping. You see it on the screen. Industry uses a needle to suck the blood of their victims. Do you know what a victim is? A victim is a living creature killed and offered as a sacrifice to a deity or supernatural power or in the performance of a religious rite. So then we go read it so you can see it for yourself. And context is always important. Living creature killed and offered as a sacrifice to a deity of supernatural power or in the performance of a religious rite. Sacrificial animal, personal animal killed as a sacrifice. Then it says a word of uncertain origin. So they're saying, hey, we haven't found enough evidence to show where this word came from. Interesting. It says perhaps related to vicus, vices, which is the turn or occasion, as in vicarious. If the notion is an exchange with the gods, meaning to make you know, to make an exchange with the gods, and making it make is making a, a turn. You know, I'm, I'm gonna give you this in turn for something else. Perhaps distantly connected to old English, idol or holy, consecrated, on notion of a consecrated animal, which that would make make sense considering that it's referenced as a living creature killed and performed as a sacrifice that's why you should never play the victim never play victim never claim that you are a victim unless you literally are we could say christ christ was the victim christ was 
our sacrifice. You know, he didn't he didn't put he didn't put up a fight. He could have, but he didn't put up a fight. And then we see um, about you know a person uh, who was hurt, tortured, or killed by another. But going back, this is what it traces to. We're not victims. We're victors. Christ has already been the victim for us. He was already uh, killed for us. He was already set as our holy. Uh, he was already he was already wholly consecrated. He is he was the consecrated animal, the lamb. Because that's how they saw him as the, they saw him as this beast. That's how they see mankind. They see mankind as beasts. Remember, you got to understand why the Bible uses certain words. Why is Christ is God manifest in the flesh? Why does it reference him as a lamb? A lamb is a beast. What happened with Adam and Eve? Adam and Eve were made rulers over the world. God told Adam and Eve, he said, have dominion over the earth. But when they sinned, then they fell from that status of having dominion. So they came down to the level of the serpent, which is a beast, and even lower than that. Which is why you see, see man is, so, is in such a state of depra dep depravity. Man is in such a state of depravity because of that we're lower than even the serpent the serpent is the worm that what Christ says he said I am but a worm I'm weak the flesh is weak but the spirit is willing you see what I'm saying so this is what we're uh we're dealing with let's matter of fact let's go over here let's actually look at the word depravity it says state of being depraved corruption Degeneracy. And then what does depraved mean? Corrupt, led astray. Pervert, to pervert, accuse, distort, disfigure, seduce, to make crooked. Interesting. Is this not what mankind is today? Corrupt is not. This time period that we're, li we're living in, marked by people leading people astray. Isn't that what Christ told us? So people are in the state of depravity. A state of perpetual perversion. Life is in the blood. So when they suck your blood in the form of a needle, they are taking your life. And feeding off it through science. The symbol of the medical industry is a serpent intertwined around the staff. The rod of Asclepius, uh, the Caduceus. You know, you can go on and on and on with that. Because he is the king over all demons. Do you know what serpent means in the context of Genesis? It means to hiss. That is, whisper a magic spell. To divine and foretell signs without the spirit. Enchanter. To use enchantment. Learn by experience and diligent, diligently observe to use in the form of witchcraft. What do these modern day vampires do? These. What's up doc? Can we rock? In the white coats. These white coats. What do they do? That's what they are. They are 99% of them, 99.9% .9 of them, they are vampires. Sucking the blood, sucking the life of people and feeding off of it through science, through knowledge. What do these modern day vampires do? They cast spells with drugs. That's why we went and read that. Drugs are made through complex formulas. We looked at what formulas were, right? Let's go back. Formula, an expression using numbers or symbols. Doesn't the Illuminati and everything people talk about, their whole code is the symbols? Numbers and symbols? 
<clears throat> Drugs are made through complex formulas, complex symbols that change a person's state of consciousness. So I told y'all, didn't I just tell you? I just told you, didn't I? It's about words, the manipulation of words. That change a person's state of consciousness, putting them under a spell. In fact, drug means to mix a poisonous drink and a formula is a group of symbols that make a mathematical statement. A representation of a substance using symbols for its constitu constituent elements. Guess what the root definition means though? Words used in a ceremony or ritual words used in a ceremony or ritual let's go look at it now remember context is always important and we're still in the context because they use formulas to make drugs and according to them drugs through the formula what does it do it gives them a desired result based on the concoction that they come up with formula words used in a ceremony or ritual that make up the word form draft contract regulation in law a rule method literally small form then it goes down it says uh a prescription a recipe Mathematical use is from the 1796. Chemistry sense is from 1842. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. A contract, a regulation. So when you're taking these drugs, you're entering into a contract, which is why they write you a prescription. The authority is that signature. You don't get the prescription without the word, the written word from the white coat <laughs> i told y'all it's all about words didn't i and the manipulation of them so this is dealing with math also right math is the science of quantity the abstract science which investigates the concepts of numerical and spatial relations now before i go on i want to make sure i say this because before i read it when I when I read this, then it's going to make more sense. Remember, I always tell y'all and I always say that everything that is uh, physical is spiritual in nature. And everything that is physical is something that is spiritual and is manifested spiritually. I mean, physically. Everything that's physical, it is first spiritual. The physical is simply the spiritual manifestation of said spiritual thing. A vehicle is the spiritual manifestation of something that came within, you know, um, we're going to say Henry Ford. But we know there were other motor companies before that. There was a, a black motor company um, that was a, a motor company around the time of Henry Ford, if I'm not mistaken, even before Henry Ford. So that came from within to come up with the idea of making a vehicle that was motorized. And we can go even further back in history with what we would consider and call motorized vehicles. It came from within somebody. Well, we are first and foremost spirit, right? Because we came from the father. And the Father put our soul and spirit in a body, and then He breathed into us. He, you know, He breathed He breathed His spirit into us. So we have our own spirit, and then we have His spirit, and the two are supposed to be one. So again, math is the science of quantity, the abstract science which investigates the concepts of numerical and spatial relations in greek times who got their ancient knowledge from ancient egypt and mesopotamia it was one of three branches of aristotelian theoretical science 
along with first philosophy or metaphysics and physics or natural philosophy. It was understood to be the science of things transcending transcending what is physical or natural, meaning what is spiritual. So when you're talking about math, at the core of math, you're speaking about um, understanding what is spiritual, what, tr what transcends the physical or natural. What's supernatural? We talk about something supernatural, we're talking about something that's spiritual. So math at its core, according to definition, how they look at math today, they're telling you that math is spiritual. So we believe the word of God is prophetic. We believe we are living in the end times. So that would mean that the things going on are super relevant to Bible prophecy. When we go to the book of Revelation, it tells us um, in Revelation chapter 9, they neither repented, neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Sorceries in the context is speaking about pharmakia or pharmacy, which is defined as medicine in the form of witchcraft that puts people under a spell. So we clearly see the relevance of everything going on today with pharmacy. 99.9% .9 of white coats are vampires harvesting the blood of people, which is also why they harvest the organs. They harvest the organs because there's life in it and they eat it and everything. And some of them they literally do, rather they're eating it literally or rather they're eating it uh, spiritually. This is, this is what's going on. These folks are vampires. They're bloodsuckers. They're living off of the life of people and doing experiments on the people so they can figure out how to live forever as gods. This like that matrix, this matrix type of thing where they have the people in there, you know, they was, you know, harvesting and stuff like that. They are the machines. They are the ones that are that are creating this artificial intelligence, these quantum computers, these bio, uh, these computers that are half machine and half living organism. That's some crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. So, my thing is this: if you want to keep on letting these vampires suck your blood, take your blood. And send it off to some lab so they can break it down and have all the DNA. Because they got majority of it anyway. But if you want to continue to contribute to that, then have at it. You want to, if you want to continue to have them to do experiments on you, maybe you, you know saying you want to be a vampire. Which most people do want to be vampires. They think it's cool. But we got something for you. Keep on rolling with the demons and we got something for you. We're going to bring the light. And you know what happened when vampires step into that light. Oh, we're going to make vampires that can step into the light. Step into the sun. Or we're just going to shine even brighter. And let me know how that works out for you. But you know what happened to vampires, right? Keep on playing with it. What do you think God is going to do? What do you think that God is going to do when he's, when he's bringing the the sword bringing that, that fury. You ever notice that when the vampires, they get killed, especially some of like the deep vampire movies where they show them the spiritual aspect of it. It's like black ash, black dust that just fades away, right? I wonder why. I wonder why. So with that being said, God bless each and every one of you in Jesus Christ's name as always. Stay focused for Jesus. And as you know, the truth is not debated. It is declared. And you wonder why I won't get the change out. Because it ain't finna change nothing on me. <laughs> you wonder why I'm not finna get no vampire in my blood. Or do no experiments on me. <laughs>